What's up, Village Church? Pastor John Michael here, and I'm super excited to kick off this new series following with you guys. But first, I want to talk about some things that we have going on here. Don't forget, we have our kids' ministry online right now, VKids. Go to our VKids page. If you have children, you don't want to miss that. Download the curriculum, download the video. It's a great opportunity for you to still invest and grow with your kids during this time. And also, this past week, we were able to relaunch our backpack program. We were able to go back out in the community and, and pass out food to our kids. So that was a great opportunity to still minister to this time. And maybe you want to get involved with that. Maybe you want to get involved with passing out some of that food. Let us know. Contact us. We'll explain how to get involved with that. And then last, do not forget, next week we launch our Connect Groups online. That's on April 28th and April Thursday, uh, 30th. That is a Tuesday and Thursday night at 7 p.m. You don't want to miss that. Go to our website. Click on Next Steps. Click on Connect Groups. Go sign up for which night fits you best. It's going to be a great opportunity for us to grow as a church and continue to grow as a family during this season of social distancing. So, without further ado, let's jump right in. This new series is going to be all about what it means to follow Jesus. So, if you have a Bible, go with me to Matthew chapter 16. Matthew chapter 16. In the, in the verses we're about to read, I want to kind of let you know what's going on. See, we're in a stage in Jesus' life where uh, he's making quite um, a difference in the area he's in. He's been healing people. He's been doing a lot of things. And now people are starting to talk about him. Even his disciples just said that he was the Messiah. He was the Son of God. And then all of a sudden Jesus begins to tell them how he has to come and he has to die for their sins. He has to die and then be raised again. And Peter actually pulls Jesus aside and rebukes him. And he's like, no, that's not, that's not how it works. And then Jesus is like, yo, get Get behind me, Satan. Y'all know that famous quote in the Bible. Was, and then right after that, we go to these verses. So that's where we're going to be. Matthew chapter 16, starting in verse 24, right after Jesus uh, rebukes Peter, uh, telling him, look, your mind is on things of men and not on things of God. He looks at his disciples and he says, this is what it takes to follow me. And he says this. He says, then Jesus said to his disciples, starting in verse 24, if anyone would come after me, he must deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whoever wants to save his life will lose it. But whoever loses his life for me will find him. What good will it be for a man if he gains the whole world yet forfeits his soul? I've titled this message today, Click to Follow Jesus. Click to Follow Jesus. Let's pray real quick. Father, I thank you so much for your love and your grace and your mercy. Father, I thank you for, for sending your son Jesus to, to die for our sins, to take that place for us so that we could follow him and we could follow his ways and we can enter into a peace and a rest with you, Father. God, I just ask that right now, wherever anybody is that's watching this, Father, whatever they're dealing with, God, I pray that right now in this moment that you would just get rid of all distractions. And Father, that right now in this moment that your Holy Spirit would speak to us and guide us into a deeper relationship with you. And I ask this in your Son Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. See, I think today we, we live in a society where you can go on social media right now and you can follow anybody. I mean, you could literally follow whoever you want. Go to your Twitter, go to your Instagram, go to your Facebook, and, and, and really you can just click to follow and there's really no commitment, no nothing. You could, you could follow just your favorite celebrity, your favorite actor, your favorite sports star. You could even follow your favorite pastor, me. I'm just kidding. But seriously, you can, you can follow anybody. And, and, and like I said, there's no commitment at all. It's just like click to follow. You check in when you want. You kind of stop by, like a picture or two, let them know you're still here. Let them know, hey, I'm following you. Like, I, I, I'm here. And, and you know, it's, it, that's kind of the world we live in. And, and my fear is that we take this, this click to follow method and, and we've actually begun to, to do that in, in, in our walk with Jesus. It's almost like we just think that we can just, you know, it's that easy. We just click to follow Jesus, but there's no commitment. There's no nothing. We can just kind of check in when we want. Uh, you know, every time we go to church, it's like liking one of Jesus' posts, being like, hey, Jesus, I'm still here. Like, I know I only go like uh, uh, a couple times a year, but, you know, I, I got you. And then it's like the time we pull out our Bible and we want to we want to read it. It's like almost like liking Jesus' post because, you know, Jesus is, is not really our everything. He just kind of become an add-on because it's just like a, a click to follow. There's really no commitment there. 
And you know, I think in the church, we, we've even kind of preached this and taught this to people that there, there's no commitment, no requirement from us for Jesus. It's just believe in Him, continue to live the way that you want to live. And see, Jesus actually says the exact opposite of that right here in the Scriptures. See, in the story that we just read, Jesus is explaining to His disciples, this is what it takes to follow me. This is not a suggestion. This is not just a good idea. This is not just something that I thought about. This is what it actually takes to be my disciple, to be a follower of Jesus. He looks his disciples in the eyes right after rebuking Peter, and he says this. He says, if you want to be my follower, if you want to be my disciple, if you want to follow me, you have to deny yourself. Now think about what's taking place here. See, Peter just pulled the Son of God aside. He just pulled God in the flesh aside to tell God how things were supposed to work. Right? He just looked at Jesus and said, yeah, you're the Son of God. But, hey, I know you're talking about dying and all this stuff. That's not really how it's supposed to go. You're actually supposed to kind of overtake Rome, you know, and, and you know, kind of work your way up. And then, you know, since I'm your right-hand man, I figured, you know, I'll probably be up there with you. And we'll, and we'll take over this thing. And Jesus is like, Peter, you're thinking all about yourself. He says, your thoughts are on man's ways and not God's ways. He said, if you want to be a follower of me, you have to deny you. See, one of the things about being a follower of Jesus is that it's not about us anymore. It's all about Jesus. And see, what, what Jesus is doing for Peter is he's going ahead and eliminating this thing that, Peter, it can't be about you because if you want to follow me and it's about you, you're not going to last very long. I see this a lot in churches. I've grown up in the past 10 years. I've been in ministry and, I, and I've seen in churches there's people that come in all the time and they, they claim Jesus, but yet it's all about them. They want the music this way. They want the groups that way. They want the service to go this way. They want to do this. They want to do that. And, and it's really all about them instead of coming in and being about Christ. And see, in this moment for Peter, he made it all about him. Peter was going to be next in line. He was going to be right up there with Jesus as they took over Rome. He was going to be the next one up there. He was going to be his right-hand man. But see, God had other plans. And it wasn't for an earthly kingdom. It was for a heavenly kingdom. And see, it's funny how oftentimes we want to come to God and we, we got all these plans for God and how things should work out in our life, right? See, Peter had all these plans for Jesus of how things were going to work out, how he was going to get up there, how, how they were going to take over. It was really a pride thing for Peter. But see, Jesus knew that Peter needed so much more than this earthly kingdom. He needed access to God again because, because ever since the beginning of time, we have been separated from God. So God sent himself, his son, to die so we could have access with him again. An earthly kingdom would never meet what Peter was seeking and what Jesus was providing. So it's funny how oftentimes we go to God with our own ideas, with, with what we want to happen. And what Jesus says is if you're a follower of mine, you have to deny yourself. You have to deny your ways. You have to understand that your ways are not my ways. I know right now you don't understand what's actually going on. Right now it looks confusing. Right now it doesn't look to be going your way, but you need to understand that when you deny yourself, you are showing me that you trust me and that I'm in control. And that's what Jesus was telling Peter and telling the disciples, look, if you want to be my follower, your ways are not going to cut it. You've got to deny those ways. And then what does he say? He says, don't only deny those ways, but I need you to pick up your cross. Now think about this. The, the cross was the, 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 the very thing that Jesus was going to be sacrificed on. See, the cross was representative of sacrifice, and it was a thing that they, they would use to, to crucify criminals. They would actually pay their sin debt by, by nailing them to this cross. And see, when Jesus tells his disciples, he says, look, if you want to follow me, first of all, you have to deny your ways. It can't be about you anymore. It can't be about what you want anymore. It's got to be about me. So he says, deny your ways and do what? Pick up your cross. What does that mean? He says, pick up my ways. What are my ways? My ways are the way of the cross. My ways are the way of sacrifice. My way is the way of laying my life down. And see, that's what Jesus was telling his disciples. He said, if you want to follow me, not only do you have to deny yourself and deny your ways and understand that what you want and the way that you want to accomplish it is not going to work. It's not God's ways. And then you have to pick up what God has. You have to pick up his ways of sacrifice. See, it's very interesting to me in this click to follow Jesus world. We, we want to follow Jesus without sacrifice. We just want Jesus to fix all of our problems. 
We just want God just to God just come in and just fix all of our stuff. Like I, I, I read my Bible, I come check you out online. You know, I do. Really, we have made Jesus just an accessory to our life, and He hasn't become our life. And see, what Jesus is saying right here in this text, when he says that you need to pick up your cross, he says, I can't just be an additive, I better be the whole thing. And see, when Jesus is telling them to pick up their cross, he's even adding the whole the premise that, look, if you want to follow me, you better be prepared to give it all up, including your life. You know, I think it's, in America, we are blessed. Because we're not threatened with our lives every single day because of Christianity. But see, these disciples, that's what the reality they faced. Was by accepting this message of Jesus, by accepting this, they were almost writing their death sentence. They were willing to die for this man. You know, I've been in countries around the world where villages and, and village, the people in the villages have, have been in an uprising and they wanted to kill Americans. They wanted to kill people for, for the cause of Jesus because they didn't like what we were doing there. I've been in those situations. I've met people that are fearful every single day of their life, fearful of death because of their religion, because of their, their sacrifice to Jesus Christ, because they chose to pick up their cross every single day and nail their sins to that and constantly crucify themselves so they could be holier and they could be deeper in relationship with God. Yet we live in America where we have this just click to follow mentality where there's no sacrifice, there's no commitment, no nothing. And I wanna hear, I'm here to tell you today that that's not following Jesus. You've been sold a lie. If you want to follow Jesus, it says right here, you have to deny yourself and you have to pick up His ways, you have to pick up His cross, pick up His sacrifice, and then you have to do what? The Bible says then you have to follow Him. What does Jesus tell His disciples? He says, look, when you deny your ways and you pick up my ways, you have to follow me. Follow me. Nobody else. No 12-step program. No self-help book. He says, no, you follow me. You follow my ways. Now, how do we find God's ways? How do we figure out where they are? They're right here in this book. This is how we follow Him, by reading the Word of God and understanding what it's saying so that we can go deeper in Him. It says, he says, look, when things are going crazy, when things are going insane, there's going to come a time that I'm going to ask you to pick up your cross and you're going to have to sacrifice yourself every single day. And there's going to be times you're going to be pulled all different directions. You're going to want to give up. You're going to want to quit. You're going to want to go here. You're going to want to go there. And I'm telling you, follow me. I hear Jesus telling them, He says, follow me when it's not easy. Follow me when things get difficult. Follow me when everybody turns their back. Follow me when you can't see just two feet in front of you. Follow me when your marriage looks like it's going up in smoke. Follow me when your kids seem to be rebelling. Follow me when you get that doctor's report and it doesn't come back the way you want. Follow me. See, Jesus is reminding His disciples that no matter what goes on, in life, as long as they follow Him, they're going to be right where they need to be. See, one of the things that I see a lot in our life is that we get in situations and when life begins to happen and, and, and things don't begin to go our way, we stop following. Instead of leaning in, we, we actually pull away. You know, when addictions take over our lives, instead of leaning in, we pull away. When, when, when our marriages aren't going the way we thought, instead of leaning in, we pull away. And see, what Jesus is reminding His disciples is that there are going to be moments that you are going to want to pull away. But you have got to deny yourself, deny those thoughts, deny those feelings that are pulling you away from Jesus. Crucify them to the cross every single day. Every single time that thought comes in your mind, you crucify it. Every single time that thought uh, of depression comes in your mind, you crucify it. Everything that, that, that thought of insecurity comes in your mind, you crucify it. Every time that thought of my marriage is never going to get better, you crucify it. Every time that thought comes in of I'm never going to get over this addiction, you crucify it. Every time that thought of pornography comes into your brain, you crucify it. Every single time you crucify it and Jesus says you continue to follow me. You know, it's the hardest thing to do sometimes is to continue to follow Jesus. To continue to follow Jesus. And why is that? Because a lot of times when things aren't going our way, we feel like we're losing our life. 
Let's just be honest. We feel like things aren't going our way. We're losing control of our life. And when we lose control, things begin to slip away and slip away and slip away. And see, what Jesus tells his disciples here, I find it very interesting because, see, this sounds like, you're like, well, this sounds terrible. Like, every, I have to deny myself, sac- like, kill myself every day, kill my sin. What is this? Like, you guys are like, where's the hope? Where's the goodness? This is what Jesus is getting into in the next verse. He says, look, he says, those who try to keep their life will lose it, but those who give it up for my sake will find it. We'll find it. See, what happens in this world when we're following Jesus is there's so many times that we begin to give in to our flesh and we, we stop denying ourselves. We're not crucifying ourselves to the cross. And, and, and all of a sudden, life kind of we kind of stop following Jesus. Life kind of starts slipping out from our fingertips. And, and, and what we do is exactly what this verse tells us not to do. We start trying to take our life back in our hands. We start trying to own our life, trying to hold on to our life, trying to make things stay where they are. We're trying to hold our, our relationships intact, our marriages intact, our kids intact, our finances. We're trying to hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. And Jesus says when you hold on to your life, you're going to lose it. But if you give your life up, if you give your ways up, if you give your, your destiny up and you follow my ways, my destiny, my plan for your life, you will gain it. See, what Jesus is promising is not just this, this sacrificial life here on earth that's this going to be mundane and, and, and not worth it. No, what he's saying is that if you sacrifice now, you are going to receive a great reward later. See, with great reward takes great sacrifice. And one of the rewards that God promises through His Son is a life here on this earth. Is a life with Him, an abundant, full life. Jesus says in John 10, 10, I've come that you may have life and have it abundantly. See, Jesus wants to give us life. And that's exactly what He's saying here. Is if you want the life back into your life, you need to deny your ways, pick up my ways, follow me every single day. And when you begin to give up your life, you will notice that you will start to gain it again. You will notice that you will start to feel alive again. You will notice that things are going to change again. And see, here's what Jesus says. He says, For what does it profit a man to gain the whole world but lose his soul? You know what he's telling the disciples? He says, Peter, what does it profit you to gain the entire kingdom, to be my right-hand man in a worldly kingdom that's just going to pass away? It's not going to mean anything in light of eternity. What does it matter if you gain everything that you've ever wanted? Maybe you're watching today and you've been striving for this, this stuff to fill these voids in your life and God's asking, what does it matter if you gain all of that? But in the process, you lose your soul. In the process, you lose the very thing that God made you to be. In the process, you lose eternity with a heavenly Father. See, there's a lot of people that are choosing to live their life right here, right now, on this earth. But see, what Christ offers us is an opportunity to abandon our life on this earth and have an eternity with Him in heaven. See, from the beginning of time, the one thing that we have been missing, and if we were all honest, it it doesn't matter if you've been a Christian for a long time, or maybe you're not a Christian, maybe you're just watching this, at the end of the day, we're all searching for one thing, and we want to feel life again. We want to live again. See, if you think back to the beginning of time, if you think back to the Garden of Eden, the one thing that Adam and Eve had that, that we have lost is they just had life. Think about it. They didn't worry. They didn't, before sin entered the, the world, they just lived. And that's why Jesus says that He's come back to restore life into us. And the only way we can receive the life that Christ has is if we give up our lives for Him. And that's the truth of the gospel. See, the Bible says that in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth, and and then all of a sudden, temptation and sin entered in the world, and ever since then, we've been separated from God. But see, God sent His Son, Jesus. He sent His one and only Son to die on a cross for our sins so that He could be raised again, so that now, every single day, we can sacrifice our sins, we can deny ourselves, and we can live for Him, and we can live in freedom, we can live and have life again, we can be happy, we can have joy, we can have peace, we can have all these things and what it takes it takes us denying ourselves picking up our crosses and following Jesus every single day and understanding that when we lose our life we actually gain it some of you today are watching and you're like man that sounds real good but you know I, 
Jesus' life is not for me. I want you to know something. It's for everybody. What did he say? He said, anybody that wants to be my disciple. That means everybody, not just the good. It means anybody. Any single person has the opportunity to be a disciple of Jesus. But this is what it takes. It takes you denying your ways, your will. Picking up God's ways. Picking up His cross. Sacrificing yourself every day. Crucifying yourself to it every single day. And then allowing Him to bring life back into you when you follow Him. You know, I believe today that somebody's watching this and you say, man, I need that life. I miss that life. I miss that. I want that. I want that life in Jesus Christ. If that's you today, all you have to do is just tell God, say, God, I want you. I want to follow your son, Jesus. Today, you surrender your life to him. You turn away from your sins. You turn away, you repent, and you say, God, today I'm picking up your cross, and I'm following you no matter where it leads, no matter where it takes me, no matter where it goes. I am following you. If that's you today, we want to celebrate with you. I want you to just let us know. Contact us. Let us know. Let us pray for you. Let us celebrate with you. Go fill out a prayer card on our website so we can talk with you and just encourage you on your next steps. And maybe you're a believer today. And maybe you've had this click to follow mentality. Like really Jesus has just become an add-on to your life and he hasn't become your whole life. And maybe today's the day that you're like, you know what? I'm ready to give up my ways because in reality, that's what I've been holding on to. Like I believe in Jesus. I believe in the sacrifice. I follow him, but I'm still holding on to my ways and things just aren't working out anymore. Maybe that's you and you say, I'm giving up my ways. I'm giving up my life to receive your life. God, today's the day. I believe that God wants to do a work in your life today. We want to celebrate with you. I'm believing this in you. Let us pray this morning. Father, I thank you so much for your love, your grace, and your mercy. Father, I pray for each and every person watching this, God, that that through this we would learn what it means to truly be a follower of you, truly be a disciple of you, God. The sacrifice that you made for us and how, how easily we should be able to make that back for you, God. How we should just be able to give our lives to you every single second of every day. Father, I pray today that that's what we do, that we that we give ourselves over to you, Father, and we truly, truly are followers of yours. And I ask this in Jesus' name. And everybody said, amen, amen.